Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, you're gonna about to see me put in this belt tensioner in this 2009 Hyundai Santa Fe. It's got the 3.3 liter engine. Uh, and a couple of the quick uh, effects that this thing was having is the power steering belt was slipping. Uh, so you could hear some squealing, some squeaking. It also was kind of rough to turn side to side. And whenever you pop the hood, uh, you can just physically feel the belt was very loose. And also you could see the water pump pulley uh, would turn and then it would kind of stop and then it would start to squeal. So if you're having any of those symptoms, please watch this video. It's gonna be a very easy, simple fix. Uh, you can do it in about an hour with pretty simple hand tools. Here we go, let's get started. The first step is I broke these loose with the two foot breaker bar right there. So then I'm gonna zip it off with impact. To remove this side shield right here, there is 10 millimeter there. I've already removed one right there. There is one right there, and then there's one right there. So there's a total of four to remove this shield. And I'm also using a wobble 10 millimeter. So I can get to these bolts easily. So here I am, I got the third uh, bolt out right there. So I've got one more that's uh, facing this direction. And to get this shield out, you can see that it goes over the axle a little bit. You kind of got to flex it. And you can see right there, here is the bolt. So one, two, three, and then four. Come in a little bit closer. And the reason why we take this wheel and stuff off to get this tensioner is it makes it so much easier. So here is your tensioner that we're going to be replacing. So there's one big bolt right there and there's one small bolt right there. And this is how we tension the belt. And the reason why we're replacing this tensioner is the car will not move. Uh, it doesn't have any power steering. And the reason why is because there's no tension on the belt. So whenever you start this vehicle up, it appears like the, the pulleys, like the water pump is not even moving or they're kind of moving a little bit. Like they, it looks like they're locked up but it's because the belt doesn't have any tension on it. So you can see me moving it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about parts here. So I've got a brand new Gates tensioner right here. Here's the part number, 39104. And this part is says it's made in Canada. Uh, so here's what it looks like right here. This is a pretty expensive part. I'm wanting to say uh, for the belt and this, uh, it was about 200 bucks with taxes and everything and I'm pretty sure this was about 170 so this is the gates tensioner and you can see so it's got one big bolt right here this is a 17 millimeter that holds that on 19 millimeter is how you tension uh, or relieve the tension and then a 12 millimeter is what holds this small bolt on right here so there's the new tensioner I also bought a new belt just in case this uh, belt right here had any bad spots in it, but it doesn't look like it's got any cracking or it doesn't really show any signs of major wear. So I don't think we'll be putting this belt on today uh, as preventative maintenance because the belt is actually in pretty good condition. So let me show you just a little bit closer here. So this bolt right here, this is a 17 millimeter. It's a 19 millimeter to detension the belt. And then there's a 12 millimeter right here where my finger is and that should be to remove this whole tensioner so right now even though it doesn't have a lot of tension on it I'm about to detension this belt with this 19 millimeter and a breaker bar slide the belt off and get this tensioner out of here I've got a 19 millimeter with some extensions right here and I've also got my two foot uh, breaker bar which is not pictured but this takes a huge amount of tension to relieve this belt right here. So I'm just gonna slide it off the pulley, just out of the way, and I'm gonna leave it just like that. So, let me back the camera up just a little bit. So this is the setup that I was using. Uh, you don't have to have this many extensions, but I wanted to be out past the rotor 
and I do have a flex head ratchet right here. This is a snap-on 24 inch ratchet. And I was using about everything that I had to, to pull this down. Uh, I was using my whole body weight. Uh, this tensioner has a huge amount of force on this. It's uh, way more than tip, like a typical uh, tensioner would have. So next step is to remove this big bolt right here. This is a 17 millimeter. So I'm gonna see if I can break it loose with this. Uh, I'm not expecting it to, but we'll see. So that's not gonna break it loose. So I'm gonna have to resort back to this setup, take my extensions off with my 17 millimeter, and I will put this through here. That's what I love about flex head ratchets. Because I don't really have any room to do it right there. So I'll have to add my extensions back. To get me out of there a little bit. that's in a pretty bad spot uh, typically you would have like an air impact or ideally you would have a battery impact that would have a whole lot of horsepower uh, uh, to break that loose and it would be very easy to do if you was in like a shop setting as you can see I'm just on the street in the parking uh, area so the easiest way to get this loose would probably be I'm using a bit smaller ratchet. Uh, this is a two foot, 24 inch. I'm using an 18 inch, but it doesn't hit the ground, so I can get a straight, uh, more straight swing on it. So I haven't broke this loose yet, but I'm gonna try. <clears throat> so I got it broke loose. So now I can use my battery impact so bigger isn't always better. So this ratchet right here would not reach. Uh, so I had to use this smaller one just to get a better angle at it. So now I got my battery impact and zip that loose just like that. Got my bolt out and now I got one 12 millimeter bolt, uh, which is right up here at the top. All right, so now I'm getting this 12 millimeter, which is right up here, if you'll show it a little bit closer. Uh, so I'm using a 18 inch breaker bar, uh, flex head ratchet, and I've just got a 12 millimeter. And that bolt, it actually broke free pretty quick. So, in a bit of a tight spot but once you uh, break that bolt loose then it's finger tight and this is the last bolt that holds this tensioner on and then we'll be on to bolting the new tensioner on all right so that's just a short bolt so you got two bolts that hold this tensioner on a 12 millimeter and a 17 so I'll put those right there and then the tensioner should come straight out just like that. And as you can see, uh, this is the original, it says Hyundai part right there, Kia. The pulley was not bad. It's just this piece right here. It didn't have any tension left in it. So, and you can also see arrows top. So it's gotta go this way. So I'll set that to the side before I look. Looks like they're about the same. Uh, this one has a rubber and this piece right here is like a plasticky piece Like I said, this piece is not OEM. It's made by um, Gates uh, From Canada That one is made in Korea and it's a factory part 
So we'll put this on the same reverse way, 12 millimeter bolt first. All right, so an important note, you have to put this 12 millimeter bolt in first uh, because the way this pulley is set up, it rotates over top kind of the, this bolt. So you have to put this in bolt uh, in first. So let me get this bolt lined up first. Alright, so I've got it hand tight, so I'm going to use my 12 millimeter, the same setup that I had uh, to put this on, and I'm going to snug this bolt up. Alright, so that bolt is snugged up. So now this tensioner, as you can see, it kind of goes over top of the bolt, you can see. So you have to put the top one in first. And then this big bolt right here, 17 millimeter, you get it lined up just like that. I usually start them by hand. And the rest of the way I use my impact. And I will snug this thing up behind the impact with my ratchet. So I'm using a three inch extension right there. So this bolt right here, it does need to be pretty tight because there is a whole lot of vibrations from the engine. So now that I've got that bolt on, it is time to put the serpentine belt back on. And I don't have to worry about rerouting because I left the existing belt because I don't see any cracks or anything on this belt saying that it would need to be replaced. All right, so my next step is to detension this belt. So I'm gonna get some extensions out here. This is gonna be pretty difficult because there is a whole lot of tension on this belt. I've got uh, a couple of extensions right here. This is like an eight inch and a three inch put together. Uh, this does have a whole lot of pressure on this tensioner. So what I have to do is detension the tensioner and then I have to slide the belt around it simultaneously. So I'll show you. You push it really slow like this, and there's a whole lot of force. And then you can see that it stopped. So now I have to slide this belt around it. Just like that, nice and easy. Get it all in the grooves, make sure all your pulleys are all lined up. And then real easy, I'm gonna let the tension back off. And something that I always do when I put a new tensioner on is I put, I switch it back to on and I just kind of pre-tension the tensioner. I know whenever you start the vehicle, it's supposed to kind of go back to where it's supposed to be but I always give it that little extra. And you can see this belt has a whole lot of tension on it with this new tensioner. So now it's time to start the vehicle. Uh, but first I would advise you to check all your pulleys and make sure that all of them is in the proper groove. Because if you start the vehicle and the belt isn't necessarily in the right grooves, you can cause a damaged belt or you can cause um, the belt to hop off. And then you have a bigger problem because then you got to put the belt and get it all back where it's supposed to be. So let's start the vehicle and see if it runs. Yeah. Can 
ignition are kicking on. Alrighty, so that wraps up the day's video of replacing this tensioner right here. Uh, so if you do have this problem, a lot of the symptoms you'll be having is squealing or squeaking. The power steering will be hard to turn at times because that belt is slipping. And you may even have some overheating concerns because what I've seen uh, with the hood popped on this thing, you could also see the water pump pulley. Uh, it would turn a little bit and then it would kind of stop. So it made me believe that the water pump pulley was locking up. And also you could see the power steering pump pulley stopping as well. Uh, so that was not the concern. It was just the belt tensioner. There wasn't a whole lot of tension on the belt uh, to be able to turn these pulleys. So even though this pulley is free right here, this is the hydraulic tensioner. And this is the bag component. We replaced it. It's running.